if you coach football long enough, you're going to see just about everything. I remember a high school game I was at. There was a big pass play going on. The defensive line got into the backfield. The quarterback was going down, and the ball came out. There was a fumble. So this D lineman picks up the ball, and he takes off. In the midst of this big, messy pileup, he comes out with the ball, and he's running full speed, and he's heading down the field, and he hears a roar from the crowd. And it's like that roar made him run even faster. He thought, yes, I'm going to do what every D lineman dreams about. I'm going to score. And he gets in the end zone and he turns around and he sees his teammates. They're hanging their heads and it doesn't make sense. And one of the guys from the other team comes up and congratulates him. And he's like, this guy's crazy. And then he realizes what he's done. He's gone the wrong way. He went to the wrong end zone. And even on tape, you could see that the other team was blocking for him on his way. They were making it easier for him to go the wrong way by taking out his teammates. His opposition, his enemy, was helping him go score for the wrong team. So you need to know which end zone is yours. You can't trust the crowd noise. You can't trust the other guys on the field. You need to know. You've got to head the right direction or else you wind up scoring for the opposition. Don't trust the confusion. Don't trust the noise. You have to know the right direction. Well, that's a pretty good analogy to what happens in the spiritual life. And that is to say, when you're running the right way, like the football player uh, heading toward his own goal, then your own team is for you and the opposing team or the enemy is trying to stop you. But if you start running the wrong way, and that is toward the enemy's goal, in spiritual terms, you're heading away from God and toward a life of sin, then everything's going to reverse. Now, the your enemy, and in spiritual terms, this is the evil one, um, what we call concupiscence, that legacy of original sin within us, that tendency that we have to really hold in check that can move us toward what is sinful, and then just harmful influences around us, places, uh, situations, some people sometimes, certain ways of using social media and so forth, uh, that if we open ourselves to it, will pull us away from God. In that case, then the enemy is supporting us, encouraging us, uh, wanting us to go in that direction. And now it's our own team in spiritual terms, God, the good angels, the saints, and all the many good people in our lives and influences toward good that are going to try to stop us on that path. So this is the first thing St. Ignatius wants us to see. <clears throat> Depending on which way we're going in our spiritual lives, our spiritual experience is going to look very different. So first, let's take the unhappy situation of a person who in a pretty confirmed way is living a life that is away from God and a life of serious sin. Very reverently, if any of us have ever lived in that situation, we know how unhappy it is. And you'll recognize what St. Ignatius is going to say here. Because what he'll say is, in that situation, what the enemy does, the evil one does, is to try to fill our imaginations with images of sensual delights and pleasures, he says. Now, think of what is around us in the culture today. Think of what can be on social media or in many different settings. And the reason the enemy does this is because as long as our imagination is filled with these kinds of images, we're very likely to continue to move in that direction away from God and towards sin. And the good spirit, now like the teammate, the teammates of the one heading the wrong way in the, in the football game, the good spirit's going to try to stop this. And the good spirit will, as Ignatius says, sting and bite in our consciousness. So you'll hear things like this, and this is when you've taken the earbuds out and you put down the screens and you're all alone. You know, why, why am I living like this? I'm not even happy this way. Yeah, I smile when I'm with everybody else, but I know I'm not really happy this way. What, what, what are you doing with your life living like this? That's the stinging and biting that Ignatius speaks about. And you know, if we've ever been in that situation and we look back on it now, we're very grateful for that stinging and biting because it was exactly that unhappiness that sense, I just don't, this is, I'm too empty. I don't want to live like this. That's what brought us back to God. And God loves us too much ever simply to let us go. 
Saint Augustine, during those 20 years when he was living a, a real life of sin and far from God, talks about that, how um, he was always unhappy. Uh, even while he was, he had all the sensual delights you could want, full life of sin, and he was living in a pretty confirmed way, that uh, sense in that way, but he was never really happy. That's the restlessness that he'd talk about so famously later on, that our hearts are restless until they rest in you, God, he would say. Now, on the other hand, when we are moving toward God, and if you're watching this, I know that it's because that's the way you are living, that's the way you want to live, and you want to live more and more that way. When we are living a life of in the church, a life of the sacraments, prayer in some way in our lives, really trying to be faithful to the Lord, to love the way the Lord Jesus teaches us, then all of this is going to reverse, Ignatius says. Now it's going to be, now the enemy, instead of trying to encourage us, is going to do everything that he can to hinder us. And so Ignatius says he'll, he'll kind of gnaw at the peace and the joy we're experiencing. He'll, uh, another word he uses is sort of bite at that. Uh, try to make a sad a sense that is, this is too difficult, you can't keep this up, there are too many obstacles. Have you ever felt this in your spiritual life when you're really trying to love the Lord? And it's a difficult day, let's say, and prayer is hard, and you don't feel much energy to go to the group that you normally love to part, uh, take part in. Uh, it's hard to really want to make efforts to, to live the faith. And there's no shame in that. I can't say that too often. There is no shame in experiencing these tactics of the enemy. It's The only important thing is what we said in our last um, session was to be aware of the, that this is the tactic of the enemy, understand it for the tactic of the enemy that it is and reject it. But you'll find these kinds of thoughts. Um, St. Augustine tells us that when he wanted to move away from sin and toward God, he found these kinds of thoughts, you know, how many times have you tried? How long has it ever lasted? What makes you think it's going to be any different this time? You know yourself, you know you're too weak, you know you can't keep this up. Why get your hopes up and thinks anything, think anything's ever going to change? Very reverently have you ever felt that? Certainly you and I all have, and there's no shame in that. Don't be surprised that you feel that. This is normal spiritual experience. What really matters is to be aware of it, notice it, Name it for the tactic of the enemy that it is, trying to discourage us when we're trying to grow toward God and firmly reject it so that it never stops us from moving toward God. And on the other hand, Ignatius says, when we're trying to move toward God, now the good spirit, God, his angels, saints, all the influences for good are on our side. They're trying to encourage us. They're giving us courage. They're giving us strength. They're giving us inspirations, showing us what the next step is showing us that the obstacles aren't that difficult. You can do it, you can get through them, and in fact, by going through them, you're even going to grow. And you've experienced that too. In so many ways, God can do this. Um, so, what really matters here in these first two rules of Ignatius is to notice this experience and respond to it. So I'm going to read the rules, and you can see the text. When a person lives a life of serious sin, the enemy fills the imagination with images of sensual pleasures, obviously to keep the person moving that way. The good spirit stings and bites, that sense of trouble and emptiness in the person's conscience, which is God's loving action calling the person back to himself. But when the person tries to avoid sin and to love God, so Ignatius is speaking right to you right now, this reverses. Now it's the enemy who tries to bite, discourage, sadden, make it to seem too difficult, and the good spirit in so many creative ways will give you courage and strength, inspirations, easing the path so that you can move forward. Never be ashamed of those discouraging moments. That doesn't mean that you don't love God. It doesn't mean that things are falling apart in your spiritual life. It doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean that you have to go backwards in the spiritual life. It's just an ordinary tactic of the enemy that we've all experienced. 500 years ago, Ignatius put it into words for all of us. You can be aware of it, understand it, and reject it. And at the same time, thank God for his faithful love, which will always give you the courage, strength, and the inspirations that you need. As we go forward, Ignatius is going to give us more and more tools to do this.